Good morning. Okay, I just realized why I wasn't seeing any comments and that is because I didn't hit the red button. <laughs> that I thought I was going and I wasn't and I apologize if, uh, uh, you know, if I screwed that up. Totally my fault. It's all on me. Uh, I've been talking. I've been painting. <laughs> So um, what I can do is uh, I could actually start again. So if you are just tuning in, I apologize. And uh, I, you know, I did think I was um, live, but I was not. And um, so thank you for joining me if uh, you're just tuning in. If you are, uh, please uh, say where you're from. Uh, I love to see where you're from. And... Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to grab one new piece of paper here. Okay, so got a new, new board. This is my do-over. <laughs> so what I am doing is I am working on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. I have pre-stretched it. It is um, approximately 9 by 11, which me means my finished painting is going to be about 8 by 10. I like to go standard sizes because standard sizes are a lot easier to find frames for. And um, mess that one up. Um, so what I did was I soaked my uh, paper in room temperature water for about three minutes and then I uh, quickly stapled it down to a piece of gator board. If you're not familiar with gator board it's sometimes referred to as um, watercolor board and it is very it looks a lot like a uh, foam board however it does have a very hard surface on it so it's got like a veneer on the front and back so it is a uh, very very sturdy and will not warp right so it it stays perfectly flat as you can see and um, it will hold uh, ordinary staples. So I don't use a heavy duty stapler on when I'm using gator board. I just use a standard stapler that I open up. And next day I take tape and I tape over my uh, staples because that will um, give me a nice edge. Right. And it helps hold the staples down a little bit tighter. You know, just a little added security. So Okay, so missed one little bit here, so I'll just put that down. All right, so I am ready to go. You can see my um, my reference picture here, which I took Monday evening. Uh, we had a, a kind of a pop-up thunderstorm coming through, so it was kind of going from um, a sunny day to suddenly a um, storm. So you had this really, really intense indigo cloud coming and above that was this beautiful cumulus cloud very very light and um, so I'm using my 140 pound Arches 140 cold press paper uh, my palette consists of mostly da Vinci watercolors but I do have some Windsor Newton here and um, uh, my brushes are a squirrel hair synthetic blend uh, that I bought on Amazon and uh, the description is in or the the brushes are in the description below so you can see because I have no idea how to pronounce this <laughs> and uh, but this is a squirrel hair brush I'm using a six to begin with I'm going to rinse this out well in fact I should probably should be starting with cleaner paper cleaner water but 
Oh, well. Um, all right. So I'm looking at my reference and I have this wonderful um, cumulus cloud right about here. And um, it comes up, rising up behind and it has kind of a crisp edge. So edges is one thing that I'm really going to emphasize here with this demonstration because the edges are important. If I wet my whole paper and tried to go around that cloud, it would go all soft. And I really wanted to capture that really crisp. Well, you can see what I've already done here previously is I, I want to capture this really crisp edge here. So for me, that being the focal point, that, um, that's really going to draw some attention. Now my colors, I'm going to be using um, a cobalt. I'm, this one is a cobalt hue, um, and it is not as granulating as some of the cobalts in various um, brands. You can get cobalt, but it, it can be um, fairly granulating, but not nearly as granulating as um, uh, French ultramarine, for example. So uh, I don't want granulating color for my sky. I will be using a little bit of uh, just cobalt by itself which you can see is a nice clean bright blue but I want to mix a, uh, a stormy gray color a little bit on the purpley side by taking my cobalt and to that I'm going to mix um, a red but because I want it on the purple side but I don't want it bright so I don't want to use a pinky red I want to use one that is a little on the orange side so I'm going to a color called Rose Door and mixing that in will give me a nice sort of uh, dull purple, right? So that's going to give me that. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush. Using a large brush because I know that this will hold a lot of water. Very important for this particular project because we have a lot of area to cover and um, we need to keep the flow going and if any parts of it start drying so if i don't load up my brush enough and i put paint down it's just going to soak right into the paper don't forget how how absorbent watercolor paper is so you need to be um, you need to compensate for that by having a lot of paint and uh, stuff in your in your uh, brush so coming in first with a little bit of blue sky let's go a little bit nice and blue up here and now I'm going to start getting into uh, some of the clouds in the background so I'm going to connect that but not blend into it I can switch it up a little bit sometimes the clouds get a little bit thin in places all right so here's where I want to capture my um, my billowy clouds, my cumulus cloud here at the top. Get that kind of popcorn effect. Let's see if I can get a good shape here. All right, so get that filled in. And this can come in and I'm, I'll be coming in with more darks on this afterwards as well but I will come in uh, well I need to work quickly here so that's what I'm aiming at here And it's near impossible to get this exactly like the photo, so I'm not going to try. Uh, but now I have some areas here where I'm adding in some uh, darks. And I will kind of flip flop back and forth from, from this uh, little bit more red to sometimes a little bit more blue in my purple mixture but here for example I don't want to have a crisp line there so I'm going to quickly rinse my brush and get this softened before that line dries before that starts to set up 
All right, so keep that nice and soft. Got a little bit more of the light stuff down here. Now, depending on the type of day, time of day that you take this, you might get a lot of warmth in those clouds. Uh, at this particular time, we did there wasn't a lot of um, warm color in the cloud. It was pretty cool. So um, it's uh, not going to get a lot of uh, warm color in in this white area. Sometimes if it was a sunset, for example, you might get a lot of um, uh, sort of a golden hue to the cloud. Just going to soften some more edges here. So softening as you go is very important. Um, deliberately trying to get some of these edges a little bit softer. Blotting my brush, rinsing and blotting my brush well. And down here, I want to get some really good dark color. So I'm going to go to an indigo for this area down here. This is the really stormy part of the cloud approaching. So I'm going to get some good richness there. I might even add a little bit of um, red to that. really going to get some drama going. So that part of the cloud was really dark and this may look like really too dark at the moment but uh, keep in mind that watercolor is always going to dry lighter and that there will be some other darks that I'm going to be incorporating into this. So I'm giving my brush a rinse and a blot and uh, I'm going to come in to make sure that I get some softer edges here. Now the blot is very important because without blotting I could end up with a lot of blossoms and I can see a little bit happening here but I'm actually going to embrace that. I think that that's actually going to be quite a nice sort of implication of another cloud. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to try to fuss with it or fiddle with it at all. This edge here definitely needs to be a little softer. So laying the brush down so that the damp part of this brush is causing that paint to crawl up into that space. Okay, so, so that's a good start. I will, um, I will need to stop at this point because if I don't quit um, playing with it, what I'm going to end up with is just a lot of blossoms. So what I want to do is I want to dry it and uh, let that paint set into the paper before I continue. So I'm going to mute myself for a second while I do this.
Okay, so um, it's mostly dry. I um, think I need to uh, clean my water containers though, so bear with me a second while I get clean water. Okay, so I want clean water um, because I will want to um, re-wet a few areas so that I can work back into it. And it seems a little silly to um, dry your paper so you can wet it again, but it's so that the first layers can uh, uh, be established and not move when you put your second layer on. So back to my large brush here. And when I re-wet, I'm not going to wet um, quite as much. Uh, in fact, sometimes I like to use a flat brush for this process because as I'm working into an area, I may work only just in one smaller area and so I don't really want to get it too wet. So I'm going to take my flat brush. This is a one inch um, low Cornell uh, wash brush and I'm going to blot that and I'll come into some of this and just re-wet this section, for example. And as much as I want to work on this part here, I need to hold off because I need to do the wet stuff first. All right, so I'm going to take my same uh, cobalt blue hue and uh, rose door combination, but with a blotted brush. And I want to create maybe a little bit more blue. I want to create a little bit of the um, the softer clouds that are up in here. All right, so I can work into this wet area. I only dampened it, so there's a little bit of kind of broken clouds, I guess. It's coming down. I hit a dry patch there, so I just give it a little tickle with this. Uh, flat brush so it doesn't uh, get hard on me. Harden up that edge. Okay, I'm mixing a little bit more because I want my paint to be a little less runny. I'm trying to get my paint a little bit thicker so that I can get a little bit darker color. So I'm going to wet the section that I want to work in and start coming in. Now you see my palette, I haven't stirred that up too much so I can get variety, right? I can come in here and really um, choose whether I want it a little bit more red or a little bit more blue. There is a bit of a well, there's a bit of a hard edge there. Maybe I'll leave that. That's kind of interesting. So I'll just use my flat brush to soften that. And um, I'm going to wet this part down here. Maybe a bit more blue. Okay, so these clouds down here shouldn't be that crisp, so I'm going to use this flat brush, which I've blotted, and I'm just going to run it over those edges. Make sure you blot the brush because if you don't blot it, it will just um, uh, create a blossom. And all I want to do is soften the edges. So see, I've got a little bit of a crisp edge there, and then it dissipates into a soft edge. So. And that's what I mean by that combination of, of soft and hard edges. So I'm going to come over here to this section and I'm going to create a little bit of um, 
a little bit more of that dark, dramatic type of uh, cloud coming in here. So the thing about working wet into wet is you can never control it 100%. You never know exactly how it's going to go, which is, for me, part of the fun of watercolor. I think can, that can be a really interesting uh, aspect to it. So now some of this is, I can feel the, as soon as I put it on the paper, I can see it's got a hard edge, but I can feel it as, with my brush as well. So I think it's important to sort of learn to feel what your brush, what kind of a surface your brush is hitting. So back to the paint here, we'll go a little more cobalt. And you can see I've got some hard edges here, but I have a little tickle with my uh, flat brush here. It's just enough to soften that, so just make sure you're blotting it. Blot that brush. You get that nice combination, so that's, that's kind of pretty. I'm going to take this up a little bit more, maybe. Maybe little less color this time. Take some of it off my brush and that's kind of nice. And that thundercloud is really starting to uh, emerge. And uh, okay, so down here in uh, this lower part, I want to add more here, but I'm afraid to re-wet this area because I know that if I do, this area, which is sort of semi semi wet, is going to um, is going to uh, create a blossom. So bear with me a second. I'm going to dry again. The one thing that uh, you really want to do is to make sure that um, you dry a section before you keep going because um, impatience is what's going to mess you up every time. So I'm going to mute and I'll dry this one more time. Okay, so um, I'm going to re-wet this bottom and make that even more dramatic. I do have a little bit um, of stuff happening up in here, but I can re-wet this and add a little bit more there anyway, and um, maybe a little bit right here. So where I saw that there was a little bit of an edge forming there, I can just get that blended in. And I'm just using that with a blotted flat brush. Just manipulating it a little bit. When the paint is fresh, you can uh, manipulate it quite a bit. Um, you know, so people who say that you don't have any control over watercolor, um, yeah, you got some as long as you know what you need to do. And so, I'm going to rewet this bottom section here. Nice, um, not sopping wet, just a little bit damp. And that's why I've switched to this brush because this is a synthetic brush. It doesn't hold as much water, so it's not gonna soak the paper quite so much. All right, so you can see it's softened up enough that it's actually starting to move color. So I don't wanna keep playing with it if it's moving color. And so I wanna add color, Add, adding color is good. So I'm just going to come in with some more color here. It's 
very simple palette so far. Um, I just love the drama in this cloud. This is, it was quite impressive to see in person too. It was, um, looked very ominous. <laughs> And I'm going to use that flat brush once to once more. I'm going to blot it and get this softened in. This bottom will end up with uh, trees or something there, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And as I'm doing this, you notice I'm not pulling from the dark up into the light. I always have to make sure that um, I'm only at the edge of where I've done the painting. Okay, so that's getting some really, really good drama happening there. Um, I think I'll get a little bit of indigo into my mixture. Oops, I think I went into Prussian by mistake. And we'll get a little bit more in here. And this feels like it's so dark, and yet um, when it dries, it will um, it'll be so much lighter. And I'm deliberately leaving a few pockets of light in there. So it's getting really, really quite uh, intense at this point. Might take a little off this bit here. So just use my brush and pull some of that off. Just so the edge is a little bit lighter than the body of that cloud. Okay. This is fun, just playing. Now my paper towel is getting a little bit too wet here. I'm going to get a couple of new ones. Yep, that's pretty wet. So, getting a little hard to dry off my brush. So, getting a clean paper towel. And just going to do a little, little bit here. I'm going to add some more. Ooh, I kind of like that, that little bit of a hard edge there. I'm going to leave that. I like that. Even though it's not in the picture, I, I like it, so I'm going to leave it. All right. flat brush here to soften a couple of edges. And you see it's just I'm using the edge of the brush here to to soften that. I like a, I like using a flat brush for this because it's it's wide and so the whole thing will dampen the area well beyond the edge. And so that makes it a good tool for softening. Okay. Anywhere I see some edges that I don't like, I can just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a wipe with this. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty good so far. Now I'm going to go to, this is my smallest um, squirrel hair brush and I'm going to come into some of this color and I need to um, create the, the the shading on each of those uh, 
puffs on the cloud. So let me just set, set my palette aside here and I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit closer as I work on this area. Um, but before I do, I probably should dry this just so I don't smudge it with my hand. This area is dry, so I could work on it. That's no problem. It's where I'm putting my hand that I'm concerned about. So uh, let me just mute for a second. I guess I need to unmute if I'm going to be talking. I was saying that if um, you are joining, then please um, leave a comment and let me know where you're joining from. Um, I'm also looking for suggestions for my uh, demonstrations, my live demonstrations, which I do every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. Um, I do teach a lot of workshops as well. I have a Zoom workshop every Friday. Um, you can check that out on my um, my website, which is right here, right here at the bottom. And uh, yeah, so I hope you'll check that out and uh, consider joining me for one of my workshops. Uh, this week we have a gorgeous lily. And uh, okay, so I'm going to zoom in on my uh, the top of my cloud here. And I'm going to be um, using an, the smaller um, smaller squirrel hairbrush, but I'm just sitting here thinking mm, maybe I should be using something less that won't hold so much water. So I, I'm I'm going to instead use a this isn't even marked, but this is a here I'll use a an eight round synthetic. Okay, eight round synthetic is what I'm going to switch to here. It's got a bit of paint in it, so glad I didn't put that on my paper yet. And uh, what I'm looking at here is uh, the top, the shading that goes on the top of each of these uh, clouds. Now, I'm definitely going to have to be working on dry in order to get the edges soft, but or edges crisp, and then I want to soften parts of it. So I'm going to come in with my same color I've been using. Um, and for example, and most of the shading, because my light source is from here, so most of the shading will be on the right hand side. So I'll put in a little bit of shadow, rinse my brush very quickly and blot it, and then just sort of tickle those edges where I want to keep it nice and soft. And I'm lay, you see I lay the brush down that puts that makes sure that it doesn't have a new edge because it's wet now it's damp all around here and so that's going to ensure that I don't have um, a new hard edge forming so so I can't do any more right there because that area is wet but I can come up to another spot And now I'll rinse and blot one more time and make sure that I'm softening some of the edges.
putting a little bit more color down in a couple of places here. Um, might use another, this isn't a flat brush, this is actually a, uh, this is a, called a blade brush or a dagger brush, it's sometimes called. And uh, I can use that similarly, similarly to the way that I used the big flat brush um, earlier. Okay, so I'm adding, since that's still damp, I'm adding just a little bit more dark to the right hand side. And that's just gonna melt into that little area that I softened. Actually, I won't use that dagger brush after all. I think I'm just going to use my brush and keep rinsing. Um, so a lot of this has to go on the right hand side, you know, if each of those um, puffs uh, were sort of, imagine them as a ball, I would put the shading on the right side of that. But the rinse and blot and soften has to happen really quickly before that paint, before that hard edge sets up. So um, in that effort, you want to make sure that when you're putting down your paint in the first place, that it's not so dry on your brush and your brush isn't so dry that when you come, come in with the dampened brush, that it, it can't move. Because when you put um, paint on the paper that's not very wet, first thing it does is grab the paper. Um, it's almost like a dry brush effect and, and it ends up sort of sticking in that spot. So you want to make sure you're paint that you're picking up has a little bit of fluidity to it so that it will soften as you're going. And um, okay, so I'm going to create a little bit more here. I'm coming back. I'm revisiting a spot that I did earlier and I'm going to rinse and blot and soften that in a little bit more just on one edge. I think this edge can stay crisp. I think that that really gives the effect really well. And um, I'm going to do some more of that. Quick rinse and blot and soften this edge. And I can just keep putting these shapes in and softening them as I go and getting some really nice effects. Um, not everything in this cloud is necessarily got a crisp edge though. So there will be some spots where, you know, I'll just let it uh, sort of dissipate into the rest of the cloud or dabble in a little bit of softness here and there. And uh, so you, you can really start to get the dimension of the cloud here. I love doing this. This is so much fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to come in with a little bit more. Not everything's going to have the same intensity. So sometimes I will have my paint a little bit, um, a little bit more diluted, and I'm going to soften some of that. Let's come over here to this section and get a little bit more over here going. Quick rinse and blot. You've got to be quick about it, but the effect is worth it. Okay, so getting some more. This one's really really big puffy part. Just clean water here. 
or blotted brush there, clean blotted brush. wasn't quite fast enough there so I'll just add a little bit more color get that blended in At this point, I'm really not looking too much at my reference picture. I am more looking at what my painting needs. Um, I think there comes a point in almost all your paintings where you just need to say, okay, forget the picture. Just what's the painting need? And uh, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm just going to put a little bit more, a few spots here. Really get some good sort of drama happening. Now there's quite a lot of sort of pl plain area here and I think that's important for setting up that nice contrast. So um, then I then there's going to be some some more uh, crisp edged clouds in front but not necessarily as dark or dramatic. Okay so Sort of getting that blended in there. And then I'm just going to soften part of it because if you if you make it all the same, it just um, looks a little too contrived. It won't look as natural as having some some combination crisp and soft edges. So um, yeah, so the, this is, uh, I could keep playing with this forever, but um, I won't. Um, I think my clouds look pretty good. I'm going to uh, do a little bit more down here. Very much the same sort of thing. So let me, I'll zoom back in, but I'll move down this time. Rinse and blot. And soften quickly. I'm getting brave, I'm trying to do three at once. <laughs> so, just means working quick. Soften the edges. All right. So um, I'm loving. Do you see how the separation of the colors is happening here? Um, rather than taking, say, like a Payne's gray or a, or something like that to make my sky, a common like a combined, um, like mixing your colors definitely increases the the drama value uh, and the interest in those sections so always be on the lookout for edges though um, what's happening with edges do you need to soften anything um, that sort of thing 
Now this would actually be for the trees in this area, so I don't really need to worry too much about that. But, uh, you know, that could be your um, dramatic sky. I might put a little bit, a little bit more up in here, just, you know, some sort of smaller bits, just so that they're not all the same size. Because that's important too, to make sure that they're not um, all the same. Again, it can look pretty contrived if everything looks the same. Um, I don't know why I'm not seeing any chats today, but um, if I will read all the comments afterwards and I will uh, reply and hopefully I can um, understand this, the question if it's something that happened 20 minutes ago. Right, so some little, littler puffs. But even these small ones need to be softened. And uh, you can get quite a good effect here. All right, so there's my uh, uh, dramatic um, storm clouds with um, the cumulus clouds that are they're billowing up or thunder cloud I guess they call that and um, you know just the the outgoing <laughs> um, blue sky and the incoming storm so uh, at this point if I'm doing leaves and things like that or trees in the foreground that would just go on top um, because it would be darker it's pretty silhouetted against the sky however if for example, the lighting were such that the trees were um, lighter. Uh, that is something that I might um, have considered uh, masking, perhaps, or um, I might have to actually use um, a more opaque watercolor if I wanted to go lighter on top of this. So, uh, but my, my trees would be darker. And just to show an example of that, I will, um, I'm going to take my cobalt blue um, I will take I'm going to take areolin areolin is a um, nice cool yellow and I'll mix the two of those now that's obviously too bright so let's put a little bit of something into that and indigo indigo is very dark so that's gonna definitely make a darker green and i can use this to come in to uh, create some of my trees but i think i'll dry this before i do that Sorry, I thought I hit the, the mute button. Apparently I didn't. Um, so I with, with the trees, I'm going to use um, kind of the side of the brush so that I get a broken, um, more natural looking uh, foliage. My paint, as you can see, it's not runny. It's, it's pretty much a dry brush that I'm using here almost almost a little too dry let me try a little bit more moisture in my brush all right so i'm getting you see that lovely broken edge so that's what gives me more of a natural look and i can even um, imply some of the branches in here if i want to but i want to keep this pretty dark so i'm going to go bring a little more indigo into it And I want the sky holes to show through there. Um, and 
there's a little bit on this side too. This one's getting harder to see because it's against the dark, but that's okay, it's in the corners and it's not a focal point, so that's perfectly fine. Just need a hint of it. Clearly, the this is the focal point. It's got the contrast, it's got the crisp edges, it's got the detail. Um, that's what you want in your uh, focal point. So, all right, so that wraps it up for this, this demo. Hope you enjoyed it, and um, don't forget to leave comments about uh, what you would like to see for future demos. Check out my website, it is uh, listed below as well as at the bottom of the screen at the moment and um, we will see you next Wednesday. Thanks everybody. Bye.